Hey Maximizers and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Crystal and this is a very, very highly requested video and it is how to start a YouTube channel on a budget. So I wanna preface this with, I've only been doing YouTube for about 14 months. I am in no way, shape or form an expert. So I'm just gonna share with you all the tips and tricks and things that I did to start my YouTube channel on a budget so if you're interested in starting your youtube channel and your funds are super low just keep on watching okay so here's some things that i think before you start actually filming that you should do some things i did and some things i didn't do so i will be sharing with you specifically what i did as well because i can only speak to my journey right so the first thing i would say is you need to create a fresh gmail I actually created my YouTube channel from my personal Gmail um, and I had to actually change my personal Gmail's name to fit the YouTube channel name Chris the Maximizer because my Gmail was literally like first name last name and some numbers at gmail.com so I suggest creating a whole new Gmail account specifically under the name of the YouTube channel that you're gonna start so I eventually started a Chris the Maximizer at gmail.com email but my YouTube channel is linked to my personal email so I highly suggest you choose the name of your YouTube channel and you create a whole Gmail account just for that and then thus create your YouTube channel. Once you have your name figured out, then you wanna kinda of figure out what's the overall topic of your YouTube channel. Like I knew that I wanted to talk about couponing, I knew I wanted to talk about saving money and budgeting because all those things kinda of went together but I wanna take my channel a step further where I wanna talk about maximizing your life and I knew I wanted to incorporate like some family things into it so that is why I didn't choose a YouTube channel that was just like crystal coupons or like I used to have an Instagram handle pink Chris coupons but I wanted my channel to be more overarching because couponing is just the first step so pick your topic and I want to say that if you're starting a channel and you're like I don't know what I want to talk about do a couple different video topics okay I'm not saying do cooking and hair and skincare and makeup and couponing all in one channel but do a couple of different topics that are in the same realm. Like, so me, couponing is all about saving money. You do need to have a budget. And then you will be using that savings to maximize your life in other ways. So that is how I'm able to put a lot of different content on my channel if I would like to, because I left my channel open. But guess what? You are in charge. So don't feel the pressure of saying, I'm starting a cooking YouTube channel, and then you wanna share a vlog of your family don't feel constrained that you can't do that. You never know what your audience may or may not like. So in the beginning, pick a overarching topic that is general because in that first year, it's gonna kind of be like research where you're gonna be doing a lot of different videos. You're gonna be trying to figure out what your audience likes the most so that you can create more content around that. So just pick an overarching topic and then fit a couple different things in. Next, I suggest starting to do like i just stated different types of content video don't just say i'm only doing cooking um because that may limit you maybe people want to see how you're cooking on a budget or how you're cooking healthy or how you're cooking on a special way of life if you're doing keto if you are doing paleo if you are whatever vegan vegetarian maybe people want to see different types of cooking so don't just narrow yourself down to doing one type of video in your first year especially that is your exploration stage so explore do lots of different videos to see what your audience likes once you start getting some subscribers do a poll to see what your audience likes most and you can create content around there as well okay my next biggest tip is to use what you have already i do not suggest you go out and buy a two thousand dollar camera one thousand dollar lights and this whole setup when you don't know if it'll go well right you don't know what realm you may be going into. You know, maybe you'll turn into a vlogger and you won't need a $2,000 light set up in your house because you're gonna be on the go doing your videos, right? So I would say use what you have. I started recording on an iPhone 7. So I picked up my iPhone. I ordered a couple key things from Amazon. So those things I did not have, but the camera and the laptop I already had. So I used my phone as my camera, my iPhone 7, I used my existing laptop, but by the way, I had had that laptop for about, since 2011, so I had that laptop for eight years. Um, so I eventually did upgrade that, but I'll talk about that in a second. And then there's a couple key things that I ordered from Amazon that I didn't have that I did need. 
So, I started recording my videos without a microphone and that turned out to be not so well because the audio was terrible because I was in store so they had music, people were talking. Kinsley's here so if I'm filming at home a beginner series video or unboxing video there's a lot of background noise so the first thing I invested in was a microphone I bought a $20 lapel mic from Amazon I will leave the picture here I will leave the link to the lapel mic that I have right now in the description box if you want to purchase it so a $20 mic from Amazon was the first purchase that I made for my YouTube channel and literally it plugs into my phone it's wired, so hopefully you can still hear me and it's not too crackly. It's wired, it clips on my clothes. You guys can't see this one, so out of frame, I put it on my shirt. When I'm in the stores, I just stick it under my shirt and you'll see it kind of sticking out here, just so that you can hear me well and all the background noise isn't as prevalent. You hear me mostly, okay? So this is the first investment I made. This is the investment I would tell you to make. Now, if you do have a later edition iPhone, just make sure you get the adapter um, that you plug in. It comes in all the iPhones boxes now which because this is like the old school um, plug-in and our phone doesn't have that jack on it anymore so you just need to use the adapter I have the adapter on there it's like 10 bucks from Apple you can get it at any store that sells like phone accessories to plug right into your phone and I just keep this in my coupon bag with me you keep it with you in your purse or whatever you take with you when you are recording or if you're only recording at home or on location you can have it there with you that is the first investment I made so it was $20 second investment I got was a tripod so I've been doing YouTube for 14 months and I've gone through probably five or six tripods two have broken one I don't like and I currently have one two three four different types of tripods right now that I'm actively using so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert clips of the ones that I'm currently using right now for a setup um, because I can't obviously show them to you while I'm using them and then the two that are free I will show you so I bought a tripod, another $20 purchase from Amazon. So think about it. Right now we're at $40 to start this YouTube channel. That is it. I bought a tripod that had a clip for your phone and a ring light. Because I live in an apartment where natural sunlight does not come in because I kind of have double screens in front of my windows. So very low natural light. I knew I needed a light source. So I bought a tripod with a ring light and you'll see, I'll put the picture here, the giant ring light of the one I have now. I do not have a picture of my original one because Kinsley broke that one. So rest in peace to that tripod. Um, actually two of them were broken but anywho I bought um, a tripod with a ring light if you do have a beautiful place with natural light use that natural light it will require you to film in the morning or early afternoon before the Sun goes down but that's another free thing you don't have to worry about it you may be able to get a tripod even cheaper if you don't need the ring light attached to it okay so that is the second purchase I made so we're up to about $40 to start this YouTube channel and that's all I needed for a long time now, once I started realizing that in store my videos are very shaky, um, very early on I invested in this tripod that I actually bought on a whim at Best Buy so it wasn't the most calculated. I know I could have got it cheaper somewhere else but I love this because it's a stabilizer and when I'm in the store I can use it. I just, this is my other phone, second, I have two cell phones. I'm actually recording on my iPhone X. S Max right now but my iPhone 8 this is the one I usually record on all the time so this thing is super simple I just pop it in and I go around the store I go around wherever I am and I record with this also when I go out of town and I need to record videos I'll just bring this with me and just use whatever light source wherever I am if I'm vlogging or if I go like to CVS or something this is what I have with me all the time so I keep this in my coupon bag along with my microphone and then I just plug my microphone in and then I just go around recording it also works great at home I love this because you can just like move it all around this I think this is also on Amazon so I'll leave it linked down below um so I love it you can put it on top of stuff and it's just like it this part pops out but it's just awesome they all pop out like if you want to make it smaller so you like they pop out at different levels but I like it it's perfect for me in the stores when I'm recording for you guys in my CVS Walgreens Target Dollar Tree any of those haul videos or anytime I am vlogging I am using this and like I said this stays in my coupon bag along with the microphone now this is a tripod and a light source that I do not like 
Um, it does not stand up and hold my phone. Like I thought that this would be nice. I thought that this would work very well, but my phone seems to be too heavy for the part where the phone is supposed to be. And then also I use a front facing camera cause I need to be able to see myself when I'm recording. And with this, it was just very hard and very trying. I keep it because it is a great light source. So whenever I'm doing work or something, I can use this as a light source as well. Um, cause you plug it in and you can see there's a light source right here. You plug it in and it's just a USB and it works. Now this works for some people. It just doesn't work for me. I have a much better one that I'm gonna insert here that I use. It has an arm. The phone fits in it perfectly. You can move it up and down. It stays put, it doesn't wiggle, it holds the phone well. So that is why I don't use this one anymore. And I use the one that I'm using and then I have the tripod with the ring light that also has a holder for the phone. But Kinsley also broke my really old chair and that chair was perfect for filming in this location. And um, I had to change to a different chair which is higher so the arm tripod or the arm phone holder works a lot better than the tripod the other thing was i do overhead videos so with the tripod it's great but it does not do overhead so this arm that my phone is on right now actually flips can flip completely down look you guys can see my notes you see it flips completely down so that makes me being able to do overhead videos seamless so i can record for you now press stop flip it over and then bam, I can do overview videos when I'm looking at my planner, when I'm showing you guys ads, when I'm showing you a cheat sheet, whatever. This thing is super versatile and it was about $20 on Amazon, so I will leave that one linked down below, okay? So those are the, the purchases that I made initially just to get my channel a little bit better, to make sure that my audio was good because if people can't hear me, then it's a waste of a video. Um, and if I can't be seen clearly, then that's another waste of the video. So those are the purchases. I think I paid $30 for this at Best Buy. Um, definitely worth it, but I'll keep it linked either at Best Buy or Amazon. I will link it down below. All right. So that's like all I bought. Now I did about six or seven months and have to get a new computer because my old computer that I had for eight years, mind you, I got my money's worth of it. Um, it was very slow to upload. It was taking me forever to upload videos and it, the system was just running too slow for everything that I was doing. So I ended up buying about a $400, $500 computer from Best Buy. I really wanted a Mac but I had been eating out so recklessly. Um, I didn't have enough money um, outright to buy a Mac. So I went ahead and I just bought an HP. But recently, as you all know, I did purchase a Mac about a month ago and that has been life changing. But I only did that after I had been monetized for a while when I actually started making money from my YouTube channel. So it was okay for me to reinvest into my channel because I was actually making money from it, okay? But if you're just starting out, it takes you a while to get monetized, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. So it's better to do whatever you can on a very, very low budget. I'm saying $100 or less so that you can actually get this thing started, get it rolling, gain some traction, and then once you start making money, then you can upgrade everything, all right? So now I'm gonna go into some tips about how and why I think my channel has grown to over 20,000 subscribers within about 14 months. For filming your YouTube video, always smile, okay? Be outgoing, but most importantly, be yourself. I am me on camera, so my subscribers, you all enjoy my content, you enjoy my personality, be yourself. Because if you get on camera and try to be somebody else, after about a couple months, you're gonna be like, this sucks. I want to just be me watch your favorite youtubers and figure out why you like them so much um if you watch them on instagram you watch them on facebook you watch them on youtube snapchat TikTok, whatever their personalities are the same across the board at least for the people that i watch so i knew straight off the bat that i'm gonna be me i'm flexible i'm chill i'm real i give you guys the real deal and i'm like that on camera and off camera um so i'm even more bubbly off camera which is probably like how can she get more but i'm like super bubbly all the time this is me it's not when i have my sad days but you know we all have those days but i'm just overall a very bubbly and energized person all right so just be yourself and be as open as you are comfortable with on the internet share as much as you are comfortable with sharing you do not have to share your whole life story if you're not comfortable doing that. as far as physicalities of your page make sure you fill out your about page 
um, fill out what your channel is about, what you are about, what your focus is, even if it is a couple sentences, and always leave an email in there just in case somebody wants just wants to reach out to you to collab. That is how I get my sponsored videos. My email is in all of my description boxes and it's in my about me page. So if anybody wants to contact me, my email address is there. Now I'm gonna do a second video that talks about thumbnails, description boxes, scripts for your videos. I'm gonna talk about that in a whole nother video. I just wanted to give you like the actual setup in this video, if that makes sense. So the next thing I wanna talk about is staying consistent. The biggest thing I've heard, watched, read, Googled about a YouTube channel and successful growth, you have to be consistent. So if that is uploading once a week, you should upload once a week. In my opinion, you should not be uploading less than once per week. Because if I have to wait more than two weeks for a video for someone that I'm not already bought into, I probably won't go back to your channel. And I bet a lot of you probably feel that way as well. If I was uploading like once a month, you'd be like, girl, like where are you? That's only 12 videos a year. To get monetized, you need 1,000 subscribers in a year, in 12 months. And you need 4,000 hours of watch time is 240,000 minutes. 240,000 minutes. If you're only uploading one video per month, it is highly unlikely that you will reach those milestones within the calendar year in order to get monetized by Google AdSense. And that is how YouTubers make their money from Google AdSense, but you have to hit that threshold first. 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, okay? So if you only record videos once per month, it's gonna take you a very long time to get monetized. Um, unless you are like a overnight sensation, which does happen to some people, but it is the exception. It is not the rule, okay? The second thing about consistency is you want to build a audience. Just like I said, if I only upload it once per month, I probably wouldn't have a strong audience because they're like, she comes to us once per month. How can people connect with you? How can you interact in the comments if you're only giving one video per month? So at the minimum one video per week, should be your threshold in order to give people a sense of okay i can vibe with her i know she's gonna upload every wednesday she's gonna upload every friday every thursday whatever that day is that you pick do it so that you can start to build an audience okay editing to edit those one video per week that you're going to be doing and staying consistent i use imovie to edit so iMovie is an app that is included with all Apple devices. So iPhones, the Mac, the iPads, the computers, even iPods. They still have iPods, y'all. That is what I use to edit. I do not use an Android. I'm not sure of any Android editing softwares. I will um, link one in the description box. I will do a little bit of research. I just haven't edited on Android. So I don't wanna just share arbitrarily an app that I have never used. But I will link one in the description box so that if you do have an Android phone, you can still start a YouTube channel. And I'm pretty sure they have um, very free or inexpensive apps that you can use in order to edit, okay? So I edit everything on my phone. The other perk to that is I don't have to worry about matching up audio and video because editing on my phone, I just take the clips, put them into iMovie, shrink it together, it's all together, and then I just go through, cut out anything I don't want in, and then export the video to YouTube. Very simple, okay? But just know that editing for me, I don't know about you, you may be an editing genius, it takes double time. So a 30 minute video takes me an hour to edit. 45 minutes of footage will take me about 90 minutes, if not two hours to edit, especially if I have to cut out a lot of stuff. So if I'm in the store with Kinsley and I'm constantly telling her, no, stop, don't. Or if I'm in the store and people are constantly walking through the frame and everything, it'll take me a little bit longer to edit those types of videos. Or like this kind of video where I need to add in clips and pictures and things, it takes a little bit longer because I have to gather all those clips, watch very intently, put in everything at the right number, and then get the video uploaded. So that is what I use to edit iMovie. I edit on my phone and I actually now edit on my Mac in iMovie and it is freaking awesome and that's free so if you have apple devices perfect for you to use because you can just edit right on your phone and then export that video right to youtube okay do i know i apologize if i'm jumping all over the place because you know me i start to talk and then i'm like oh i need to tell them this but i have notes and i have an outline 
but when you are creating your YouTube videos you want to choose your topic and you want to create a video outline you want to have the main points that you're gonna talk about in the video so you don't go off topic and you're not just rambling and you're giving quality content that people actually want to watch okay so whatever your area of expertise is whatever you decide that you want to talk about you love cooking so you're gonna do a cooking channel whatever just kind of outline some bullet points so you can kind of have a guide of what you're gonna be talking about in your video and at the end of all your videos you want to have some sort of action item if it's commenting their favorite food item down below for me it's always make sure you join my email list make sure you get in my Facebook group if I'm doing a giveaway comment down below your favorite thing whatever you want to have a call to action so that you can be engaged with your audience the other thing that I personally set out to do is I like to respond to every single comment. Nowadays, life is crazy, so I don't actually type a response to every comment, but I like or thumbs up every single comment that I get. There's some sort of interaction going on um, with my subscribers. In the early days, when it wasn't that many comments, I responded to every single comment, okay? Every single comment to build that community. So. The choice is yours, but I would say in the beginning, engage as much as possible so people know that you're a real person. They feel comfortable with you. They feel comfortable commenting something. They also will start to like you more because I still get, I still feel like, oh my gosh, my favorite YouTuber liked my comment. My favorite YouTuber responded to my comment. That makes us all feel well, and I still experience that on the daily. When I comment on one of my favorite YouTubers' video and they like it or they respond back, I feel good inside. I get that notification, I'm like, yes, they liked my comment, they responded, they feed me, right? So think about it from that end. It took me a minute, probably just now is it settling into me that like, I'm an influencer. And I've been fangirled and it still shocks me. But you still have to remember when you're on the other side of that to be as engaging as possible with your audience so they have that comfortability with you, okay? And always encourage all of your viewers to subscribe to your channel towards the middle or end. Um, in the beginning, when you're first starting, people may not know if they like, your, like you or like your video. And everybody's not gonna like you. You're not gonna be everybody's cup of tea and that is okay. But I would say towards the middle or the end of the video, make sure you know, hey, if you really are enjoying this content, I would love for you to subscribe. I would love to have you a part of whatever family you're building. I coined mine the Maximizer family because my channel is Krista Maximizer and we are all maximizers. But I mean, people have all kinds of names of what they call their tribes, their community, their family. So you can come up with that to build that to the community. And I know um, my subscribers, everyone out there is like, I'm a maximizer. And that makes me feel good to know that I built a community of people who are excited to watch my videos, who are excited about saving money, who are more importantly excited about impacting their family with that savings. That's what makes me happy inside. So when you're creating your channel, think about that. When you're creating your videos, you're creating your content. How can I build a community? How can I impact someone and make their life better with this content? Is this content doing something? Is it making them laugh? Is it making them think hard about a serious topic that people aren't talking about? Is it helping them save money? Is it helping them with mom hacks? Is it helping them with food hacks that'll inevitably make their lives easier because you're showing them a hack, a tip, or trick, or something that can help make their life better, okay? So when you, when you create content with the impact as the focus, then your community inevitably comes and people wanna subscribe to your channel. Okay. And then the last tips I want to leave with you guys or the last advice I would say is that have fun. Whatever topic you choose, you need to love it. I could talk to you about couponing for days, okay? Days, weeks, months, hours. I can talk about couponing. I can talk about saving money. I can talk about budgeting because all of those things have to do with the realm of couponing and helping you to maximize your life. Financially, um, saving for trips, saving for holidays, creating your household budget, creating your grocery budget, cutting back those things, right? Shopping with a purpose. Those are all things that I could talk about forever. You do not want to choose a topic that you don't like, that you feel overwhelmed with, because guess what? Your consistency will fall off because I was going to start a YouTube channel about creating resumes. And I do like resumes, but I don't love writing resumes. After like the fifth one, I'm like, 
I don't want to do it. So I was like, you know what? I'm not creating a YouTube channel about resumes because I don't want to talk about that every day, all day. What do you want to talk about every day, all day, Crystal? It's couponing. So that is what I made my channel about. You want it to be something that you love so that you can talk about it all day, every day, and you don't get sick of it. If no one watches my videos, that is fine because guess what? I'm happy with the content that I'm putting out because I love it so much, okay? It is going to take some time for people to notice you. When I started this journey, my goal was just to get a 1,000 subscribers in a year. It happened much faster for me. Um, I'm grateful and thankful to each and every one of you that have been here since the beginning. I'm just blown away. But just realistically, know that growth will be slow potentially you could take off and you could get 20 000 subscribers in two months that happens to people right you could just slide in and it could be amazing but set your expectations low because realistically it does take time to build up to that it does take time to get that a thousand subscribers it does take time to get four thousand hours of watch time in order to get monetized okay just keep that in mind, set very realistic expectations, know that you're gonna be putting in a lot of work and seeing very low return in the beginning, okay? It took me, I started in August and I was monetized, I was authorized for monetization in November and then it came through in the second half of December was my first monetized month, the second half of December 2018. So. September, October, it took me three and a half months to get monetized. And it took me about the whole, it takes a month once they say, okay, your channel has met the guidelines. Then they review your channel and then they send you an email that says, okay, your channel is ready for monetization. You can add ads in your video. And that again comes from Google AdSense. So that process takes a while. I never thought that it would happen that quickly. But I will tell you this, because I create time sensitive content and every single week there's new deals, that is one thing I think that has helped with my success because I'm constantly posting every day, but I post a lot. Remember I told you once per week, you guys know me, I'm posting sometimes five to six times per week. At minimum, I post four times per week. CVS Walgreens haul videos, CVS Walgreens top deals. Those you're getting every single week. That's four videos already. I'm doing Target. I'm doing Dollar Tree. You get a beginner series a couple times per month, okay? You get a Makeup Monday. So there are times where I'm posting seven or eight videos in one week. So the consistency is there. The traction is there. YouTube is constantly seeing, oh, she's got a new video. And they will push you up in the algorithm because they see fresh content. They see engagement, comments, likes, shares. All that stuff helps with YouTube pushing your video to suggested videos, okay? Again, we'll talk about that more in depth in another video because I already think this is a lot of information, but I really hope it's helpful. If you find anything helpful in this video, comment down below and tell me what is your biggest takeaway. What is the biggest thing you're taking away from this video, okay? Comment that down below. I'm gonna say it one more time. It takes a while to get monetized. It takes a while to get sponsored videos. I don't think I got my first sponsored video until like a first paid video. It was March or April when I got my first paid video. Um, I started getting collaborations very, very soon after um, I got monetized. I started getting collaborations. I got my first collaboration in December, I would say. So that was about four or five months, which still shocked me when people were in my inbox like, we want to collab with you. And I'm like, what? Me? So just know that it will take time. But it took me four months of still a lot of time that's like a third of the year it took me four months of just putting videos and putting videos and putting videos until somebody wanted to collab and it took me three and a half months of doing videos before i reached that level of monetization and also it takes a while before you can 100 percent live off of that google ad sense of money the way that it's set up and i'll talk about that a little more in the, in the second video um because i did not want to overwhelm this video and make it like an hour long but that's my tips for starting a YouTube channel. I'm gonna recap very quickly. Start with what you have, use your existing phone, iPad, iPod, camera, if you already have the camera, whatever you have existing, use it. As far as editing software, use what existing is in your phone for free, so iMovie, or go to the Google Play Store if you have an Android and just type in editing video editing software for free and it will pop up for you. Start trying things out, it's trial and error, okay? 
Um, also, if you're going to invest, invest a low to start, get you a tripod, get you a ring light, get you a microphone. Those things are essential when you are starting your YouTube channel just so that you have good audio, you can be seen in the video, there's no shakiness, and you have a good lighting source, okay? Smile, be yourself, be outgoing, share as much as you are comfortable with sharing. Be consistent. You want to post at least once per week. Create a beautiful bullet-pointed outline so that you know what you're going to talk about in your videos. Um, another quick tip is that you can always batch your videos so you can sit down and film three or four at a time depending on what your topic is so you don't have to worry about every single week coming up with fresh topics. Again, I'll talk about that in the second video for sure. Make sure you leave your um, viewers with a action item. Subscribe, like, comment down below. And for you all, comment your biggest takeaway. Let me know what you're taking away from this video. Lastly, have fun, be patient, love whatever content you're putting out there and know in time your hard work will pay off i look at somebody like jackie anna who's been on youtube for like since 2008 or 2009 she's been on youtube for 10 years and now you can see some of the success that she's having but she was like child for years i didn't make any money off of my youtube channel years years right so she's constantly making all this content and not making any money just the joy of building that community and now she has over 3 million subscribers she's going on brand trips and a whole bunch of other things so you got to put in that hard work and know that it eventually will pay off as long as you are consistent you are true to yourself and you're delivering content that is valuable the hard work will pay off i promise you that so just put that hard work in stay true to yourself be consistent and it will manifest into something probably more than what you have imagined. So just stay consistent, stay at it. I'm excited for you. I can't wait to see what kind of YouTube channels come out of the Maximizer community. I'm excited. If you do start a YouTube channel, let me know so I can check it out, all right? Um, so yeah, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be having a part two coming out very soon where I'm going to go in depth about creating thumbnails, about creating the description boxes, about your about me and just being consistent in those areas because all that stuff also helps to build your channel. Okay. So if you have questions, please comment those down below. All right, Maximizers, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit long, but there's just so much that I wanted to say, so many tips that I wanted to give. So I'm going to be doing a part two. Stay tuned. That'll be out in a couple weeks. If you're like, Crystal, this is great, but I still need more help. I do have one-on-one -on -one sessions. I'm offering a 15-minute session for $15. The link is in the description box. I can help you come up with your YouTube title or even help you come up with topics to present on your YouTube channel if you already have an idea of what you want to talk about. So if you have questions, comment those down below. Again, comment below your big biggest takeaway and if you want a one-on-one -on -one session you can sign up for those in the description box thank you all so much for your love and support i really appreciate each and every one of you and as always please like share and subscribe thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video